Socrates said, the unexamined life is not worth living. Our next guest wants people to be conscious of the clothes that they wear, to be personally conscious and socially conscious, to be both fashionable and responsible. The unexamined wardrobe is not worth wearing. <laughs> she started her fashion career as a single mother, operating out of her parents' basement, pulling herself away to run upstairs to breastfeed. She learned fashion working for that wonderful iconoclast, Vivian Westwood, in, New in London. Now she has a store in Gastown, a local garment factory providing employment to many. She's one of Vancouver's most recognized brands. Please welcome Nicole Bridger. Thank you, Sam and Lynn. And hello to all you lovely people. Some I know, some not yet. My name is Nicole Bridger. I'm an ethical fashion designer. My mantra for my company is I am love. I'm possibly my mantra for life. And what I mean by that is I believe that in our purest form, we are love. And perhaps the reason that we're here on this planet is to figure out a way to come from that place in all that you do. You have a choice to choose love or fear. So how that mantra shows up in my company is three parts. It's about doing what is right for the earth, its people, and spirit. So for the earth, I use sustainable fabrics, as sustainable as I can find right now based on the size of my company, the size of orders, and also technology. Right now, um, the textile industry is probably number one, definitely a leading industry for toxic waste in this world. So just as an example, in China right now, there are 350 million people that don't have access to drinking water, clean drinking water, because of the dumping of toxic waste into rivers like this one, that may be a surrounding village's only access to clean water. There are rivers that are bright blue, popsicle blue, that you can see from outer space because of the dumping of dyes into the river. So we use uh, fabrics like hemp and wool and tencel, which comes from selectively harvested trees, and we use low impact dyes. We're doing our best, we're not perfect yet, but. It's about making steps. For people, we use ethical manufacturing. You may be familiar with this image. This was the collapse of Rana Plaza where thousands of people died. And to me, it just doesn't make sense that there are people that are suffering and being abused in order for you to wear that shirt on your back. It's nonsensical. And right now there's an estimated 35 million slaves in the world. Those are men, women, and children. And I can't say for certain how many of those are employed in the apparel industry, but the industry does rely very heavily on that labor. This is a picture from our factory uh, here in Vancouver at Six in Manitoba. This talk tonight um, has come up perhaps in one of the more, and maybe even most difficult, of my life so far. Um, we are closing the factory. We just packed it up for the last two days, and as of Saturday, it will be no longer. This is a 20-year-old factory that I have been using for five years, and I bought three years ago. And we did everything that we could to try and make local manufacturing work. But the truth is, is that we've come very accustomed to inexpensive clothing. You know, would you be okay knowing that somebody was making less than minimum wage to sew in our city? I'm not okay. So it was a very expensive thing to own your own manufacturing. So as of Saturday, it's, yeah, it's gone. But what is opening up now is that I'm excited to start looking at other ways, you know, going to um, developing countries overseas where we can start to produce with ethical factories, go back to Bangladesh and help those people that are, are in need and figure out a way to make it better. The third part is spirit. Honestly, you can make the most green product and if you lose sight with, it, with that per strive for perfection, if you lose sight of spirit and balance, to me there's no point. So we sew a label in each piece of clothing and it says, I am love. And this acts as a reminder to you as the wearer to also come from that place of love. And that starts with how you talk to yourself in the morning. How do you talk to your children? 
how do you be an agent of love in your own world? Is that 250 over? No. Sorry. <laughs> Make sure I'm okay by the time. <laughs> I also believe that every woman and every person has the right to feel beautiful just as they are. This is it in this lifetime, this body. We gotta learn how to love it. And clothing is not so shallow. You know, it can actually be a gateway into your relationship to yourself and for you to reunite with your spirit. So what can you do? You can ask your brands that you buy from where and how are those clothes being made. There's something called the Fashion Revolution that commemorates the, the collapse of Rana Plaza. It happens every spring, and it's a social media blast where people call out their brands and say, how are my clothes made? And you might think that it's trivial, that it's a simple question that may be overlooked, but let me tell you, the brands will follow your dollar. You do have the power. You can't tell me that Walmart is now carrying organic yogurt because they care or because their values have changed. They're doing it because they're losing money because people are becoming educated and asking more from their brands. They're wanting values aligned brands and purchases. So I encourage you to start to ask those questions. And together, I do believe that we can make big change. Thank you. <laughs>